Hey, let's talk about the Tesla minibus, or maybe we'll call it the cyber van. This is going to bring the Tesla electric vehicle robo taxi revolution to a much broader set of the population. It is going to bring down the cost of travel even further, much further, make things better, more convenient in so many ways. So the Tesla minibus or the Tesla cyber van, it's going to look cool and it's going to be great for people. Are you ready? Let's go. By the way, I'm on Patreon. My Patreon supporters get early tips on what's coming in my videos. They get bonus content. Please sign up for Patreon, support this channel. Thanks. In the master plan part two, or do, in the master plan part two, Elon Musk and Tesla talked about what they're going to deliver in the future, what's coming. They talked in particular about heavy duty trucks, which is Tesla Semi, which we know is coming. And they talked about high passenger density urban transport. That is the Tesla minibus that I'm going to show you today. Elon talked specifically about shrinking the size of buses. He talked about increased passenger aerial density by eliminating the center aisle and putting seats where there are currently entryways. The goal is to make the buses smaller and more space efficient so that you get more out of less space and you're able to deliver more value to people while spending less money developing it. Back in 2016, Elon talked a little bit about the minibus. He said it would be built on a Model X chassis and the people density would be surprisingly high. Now, I believe that things have changed. The Cybertruck has a better framework for what they want to do with the minibus. The Model X chassis is smaller. The Cybertruck skateboard is larger. The Cybertruck skateboard is 232 inches or 590 centimeters long. It is 80 inches or 203 centimeters wide. That gives more room for batteries. I made a video about Cybertruck's batteries and why the size of Cybertruck allows for more batteries and allows for maybe more cost-effective batteries. That same logic applies to minibus done on the Cybertruck skateboard. Elon also mentioned that the design is inspired by some of the California custom Volkswagen combi design art. Now, I'm not sure if that's going to be followed, if it's going to work, but I think we're not that far off. So let's talk a little bit about what Elon was talking about with higher density. You look at this diagram of a bus. This is a 37 passenger luxury bus with two seats for the driver. Now, if you follow what Elon is saying, you eliminate the center aisle, that big red line in the middle. You eliminate the red square where people come in and out of the bus. You eliminate the red square at the front with the driver because this is going to be a robo taxi. And you're saving a lot of space that you can put seats in. So this is, where the space is missing. Now there's a challenge. If you eliminate the center aisle, if you eliminate the entryway, how do people get in and out? If you eliminate the driver, we understand with robo taxi, you can eliminate the driver. And we don't need the driver anymore because it's a robo taxi. But this other issue, what did Elon mean? How are we going to do that? So I think I understand how it's going to work out. So here's a side view of what the Tesla minibus might look like. And what you can see is four doors. That allows for four or even six rows to be able to get in and out. Think about this is going to be on either side. So instead of having people walk down an aisle to get out of one door, people can get out on either side of the vehicle using these doors. And maybe you can squeeze in a fifth door. Maybe you can shrink the wheels and create an extra door back there. And cover. There may be a way around that. This is what I think Elon intended with eliminating that entryway and eliminating the aisle and how it works. Now let's look at what floor plans would look like inside the minibus as compared to a luxury bus. So here you can see that luxury bus again. You can take that the same seat sizes, drop it into a cyber truck. This is the, the same seat sizes, but if you look at the back row of the luxury bus, you see a five seat row. So I just took those five seat rows and I put them in a space that is the length and width of the Cybertruck. You can see the Cybertruck is much smaller, and yet you're able to squeeze in 30 seats with reasonable, actually greater leg room than in the, in the luxury bus. So in this diagram, I did something a little different. The top picture is that diagram of 
seating in a luxury bus. I did the same thing with Cybertruck's length, but with the bus's width. So it is a wider vehicle than a Cybertruck or what I think the minibus will actually be. The, the minibus that I'm projecting will be 80 inches wide. This bus is 100 inches wide. 100 inches is 254 centimeters. 80 inches is 203 centimeters. This layout here shows what you could do if you made the minibus wider than I think it will be. But if you made it the same width as a luxury bus, which is something that is, you know, a common width that is used in many places, I think it'll be much more effective. You don't lose that much. We go down to a somewhat smaller size. This next picture you see at the top, that's that 30 seat format that I showed you in the previous slide. Here you can see if you go to Cybertruck's length and width, you might end up with 24 seats of the same size. Again, you have more legroom than you had in that luxury bus layout. And you go down a little further and you say, well, what if Cybertruck's wheels get in the way? And maybe you can lay it out where you only have three seats wide in the front and back, and they're separated from the wheels. You could have this set up so that the seats on either end are above the wheels. I think it may be better to do it this way that will allow this, the minibus to lower on when pe people are getting in and out so that they can get in and out more easily. So here's a side view of what the interior might look like if it has a frame. This is not necessarily what I expect the frame to look like, but just the idea that the supports would be at the seat backs. And then there's spaces for people to get in and out. And if you make those wheels smaller, it's easier to squeeze more doors in. If you have the front row facing to the back, then those two rows can get out of one door. Part of this design is having the back of the bus a little taller than the front of the bus, which allows you to elevate those rear seats over the wheels if necessary. So taking those supports away, here's one way of looking at it. This is using less comfortable seats. They're not individual seats. And you can see you can squeeze 18 passengers in with the back row elevated. That's just one way of looking at it. And by having the floors low to the ground, it's going to be easier for people with disabilities, with physical challenges, to get in and out of the minibus. I did another way of looking at seat configurations. This is 22 seats. Each seat is 19 inches wide. The average adult male in America has 18 inch shoulders. So you can squeeze, squeeze 22 seats in. These seats are 19 inches wide. The minibus is 80 inches wide, so there's room for four seats that are 19 inches wide with a little bit extra. 19 inches is 48 centimeters. The standard bus seat width is 18 inches or 45 centimeters, so this is actually more comfortable. You can squeeze in more, and I would like to suggest here that I tend to think about things from an American perspective, and we are big and we are wealthy. There are places in the world where people are smaller, and I'm thinking of India and China in particular, but plenty of other places in the world. On average, they're smaller, and they're not as wealthy on average. And the value of squeezing more seats into the Tesla minibus in terms of lowering the cost per passenger mile is significant for people who are struggling economically. So here's a version with a 31 seat configuration where you shrink the seats to 15 and a half inches wide. Now that's tight for an adult American male, the average adult American male, that would be tight. Keep in mind half the people riding this are gonna be women and a lot of the people in poorer countries might be smaller, so this might be an approach that would be used in some other countries. You could also see bench seats. You could turn the front row of three seats around to face to the back, and those two rows could use one set of doors to get in and out. I've left plenty of legroom. I don't think you need to include this much legroom, but with this setup, using the Cybertruck dimensions or minibus, you're able to squeeze 31 seats in. This is tremendous. We're going to talk later about how much value that adds for people. Here's the other end of it. Suppose you wanted to do a luxury bus. This might be something more appropriate for Western Europe or the United States, where you make people very comfortable, you give them very large seats, and you can still squeeze 11 people into this minibus. And again, you could turn the front seats around, give access to the doors. I think people prefer to face forward. Just an opinion. I'm not sure it's going to matter. Another configuration you could think of is a luxury configuration that allows for more cargo. You have nine seats and you have a lot of space for cargo, both front and back. That could be useful for some people, some applications. This is one of those things you create this platform and you let people decide what they're going to do with it. There may be a lot of different options. One of the great things about this van setup is it's a very flexible architecture. 
Now, if you really want to have fun, I've seen people talking about a Tesla RV. Well, what if you did a three seat RV and you were able to fit a queen bed in the back? I checked, a queen bed fits there in between the wheels. A lot of room in the back. This would be a fantastic RV. An RV for people who are not an American, I don't know if this is term is used elsewhere, is a recreational vehicle. We have a thing in America where people drive around in these large vehicles and they sleep in it and they have their little kitchen in it and they have seats. You know, they drive around, go around the country and travel. And this is a way of traveling and you have a lot of room behind you. You could also take two of those seats, move them up between the wheels and create even more space. And another thought is a cargo van configuration. You can see the, the Tesla minibus becomes a cargo van. And you eliminate all the doors. You have a big door in the back. Maybe you have some side doors. You have a tremendous amount of volume that you can use. Use this as a working vehicle. This is why the Tesla minibus really matters. It gets the cost per passenger mile down tremendously. You start by looking at the Tesla Model 3. Currently, Tesla Model 3 costs, if you get a million mile, if you get a million mile Tesla Model 3, the cost per mile for the vehicle is around 15 cents a mile. Now you can fit five passengers on a Model 3, and that gets the cost per passenger mile down to three cents a mile, which means the cost of transporting one individual on a 20 mile trip only 60 cents. It's pretty amazing. Now that's the cost that assumes the vehicle is full, but the Model 3 is not really designed to be a mass transit vehicle. The question is how much better could you do? So let's look at the minibus and let's say, because a lot of the costs are not gonna be that much more than the Model 3, let's say maybe we can get that down to a 25 cent cost per mile for the whole vehicle but let's take a 10 passenger format and you get the cost per passenger mile down to two and a half cents a mile. That's not a huge saving over the Model 3, but that's the beauty of the cyber bus is you can go up and let's suppose you had 20 passengers in the minibus. 20 passengers in the minibus. And let's say, you know what, we're carrying a lot of weight here. We're going to have to build the vehicle with more structure to be able to handle that weight. You know, it's a, it's a heavier duty vehicle. It's going to require a more, a more heavy duty suspension. So let's say that's going to cost 30 cents a mile. The electricity use and other things, you're not going to be able to do it for the 15 cents a mile that the Model 3 does it. But you're spreading that cost over 20 passengers. And now you're getting the cost per mile down to a penny and a half, one and a half cents. You're down to, a thir to 30 cents for a 20 mile trip. If you do a, 500, a 100 mile trip, it's only $1.50. That's the cost. This is not the price that the passengers are paying. This is the cost to the company Tesla operating the minibus, or maybe it's a city that's bought these. Their cost to take somebody on a 100 mile trip is only $1.50. Their cost to take somebody on a 500 mile trip is only $7.50. You can imagine in the United States, a 20 passenger setup on this minibus would be fairly comfortable and you'd be paying maybe $15 to go on a 500 mile trip, maybe 20 bucks to go on a 500 mile trip. This is gonna destroy airline industry this is going to destroy commuter trains uh, all kinds of all kinds of other transit because it's going to be so inexpensive to travel in it and it's going to be so much more convenient if you take it to very poor countries or just populations could be in the united states populations where people are very poor and they're looking to save every penny that they can and you squeeze 30 passengers you get 30 seats onto your minibus now you're talking about getting the cost per passenger mile down to a penny one cent a mile. At a 20 mile trip costs the operator 20 cents. At a 100 mile trip costs a dollar. At a 500 mile trip costs five dollars. This is spectacular how much we're saving, how much money this is saving. And so somebody can take a 500 mile trip for five dollars. For ten, someone can take a 500 mile trip for ten dollars. Or they can take a, they're, they're driving around town, they're taking a ride around town, maybe it costs them 50 cents to go anywhere in their city to savings and shorter trips are even cheaper maybe it's a dime to go a few miles tremendous saving this is less expensive than common forms of transit in poorer countries like india and egypt looked it up one of the things i love to talk about is the podcar robo taxi podcar robo taxi is an image i saw for transporting individuals in a cost-effective manner and the problem is even if you get the cost per mile of the podcar robo taxi down to a nickel the cost per passenger mile, because you only got one passenger, is still a nickel. It's five cents. 
20 mile trip is still a dollar. Now, I'm from a wealthy country. I am not a poor person. Paying a dollar or $2 for a 20 mile trip is cheap. That is really, really cheap. Uber is $2 a mile roughly. So that trip would used to cost $40 and now I'm doing it for a couple bucks. Huge difference why Podcar RoboTaxi saves money. But imagine if you can get that cost down even further. You can take people who really need to stretch their dollars and their pennies and their Egyptian pounds and their rupees. You're able to deliver them this transportation at such a low cost. And there's another big advantage I want to talk about with cyber platform for minibus. If, and I think it's probably the right thing to do, but if Tesla makes minibus using not just the Cybertruck skateboard, but the Cybertruck stainless steel construction, that is bulletproof, the handgun round. All of a sudden you can take, there, there are certain countries that have violent crime problems. Africa in particular, Latin America in particular, they have more violent crime. There are places in the Middle East that have a lot of terrorism issues, other kinds of issues where there's violence and people fear violence. People in some of these countries pay extra just to ride in something that's air conditioned. They're gonna be a lot happier if they ride in something that's not only air conditioned, and keep in mind, minibus is gonna be air conditioned because it's gonna have something like the heat pump from the Tesla Model Y. But on top of that, it's gonna be bulletproof to handgun rounds. And that means people will feel safer. So this is a tremendous, um, a tremendous opportunity for Tesla to deliver something. And remember Tesla's mission. Tesla's mission is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. So working with Americans, Tesla is already doing a great job of getting us out of gasoline powered cars and shifting us into electric vehicles that are much more. There are large parts of the world where with large populations where large amounts of fossil fuels are still used. It pollutes the air, makes it difficult to breathe in places like China, and it continues to emit CO2 and other pollutants that create problems for the environment. If you are able to take people who are currently using diesel powered transportation or other bad transportation, shift them into electric Tesla minibuses, save them money, get them there quicker, get them there safer, get them there more comfortable, and at the same time make the environment better. This is a big opportunity for Tesla to number one, help a lot of people, and believe it or not, make a lot of money because if you transport this many people and you're charging double what it costs you, you've got a huge profit margin on these rides while you're making the world a better place. This approach is good not only for roads, but since we know that Cybertruck fits in boring company tunnels, we would also expect that the minibus, the Cybervan, will fit in boring company tunnels. In places where we are using these boring company tunnels to transport people, avoiding soul-crushing traffic, the ability to transport 20 people at a time or 30 people at a time in boring company tunnels and getting people where they want to go quickly without the hassles of traffic is another tremendous advantage of the Tesla minibus. And that cargo van concept could be very good when the tunnels are empty at night. When the roads are empty at night, those cargo vans could be transporting goods and other objects in the tunnels at night when they're not busy with people. One of the other cool things to think about is how will it work from a practical perspective when individuals want to take a ride. They're going to have the Tesla app. It's going to be on their phone, Android, iOS. If you ever look at Test Loop. This is Test Loop. Test Loop. Welcome to Test Loop. Test Loop. The next step in the transportation evolution, this company called Test Loop. Which is a company in California, Nevada that transports people from Los Angeles to Las Vegas to San Diego. It's like buying a seat on an airline. And you could see the same thing happening here where you could reserve your seat on the minibus, hop on, take your ride. It's deducted from your account. And this allows Tesla to optimize the number of people on the minibus so it's mostly traveling full. This system is a lot more efficient if the buses run full. The buses start to run half empty or with only a quarter of the number of people in them, then they're not efficient anymore on a cost per passenger mile basis. 
And the beautiful thing about Tesla is they're really good at software. And just like they're using AutoBidder or Megapack to manage the load and work with utilities, Tesla will develop software that will optimize the use of these minibuses so that they're running full, so that they're able to keep their costs down and deliver this kind of transportation to the population at low cost and make life better for everyone. I was motivated in part to make this video and think about Minibus because I had a couple conversations. If you look back at my interviews, I interviewed a man who in the United States who's economically challenged and rides two hours on a public bus. And I talked with him about the possibility of doing pod car robo taxis and how inexpensive it would be. And that was still more expensive for him than riding on something like public buses, which are very slow and very inconvenient, but he just can't afford the money. I also talked with Sam Haroon, uh, who grew up in Egypt, and he talked about the challenges of transport in third world places like Cairo. And that led me to look at India, that led me to look at some other places and say, how can we make transit better? And that's what I think Elon is going for here, Tesla is going for here, with what's coming with the minibus, is how can we deliver this in a way that really attracts a lot of people to ride it, takes them off of fossil fuel powered vehicles, delivers them better transportation, more convenient for lower cost, more safety, all of that. This is the motivation for this. Profit matters for Tesla. Profit matters for shareholders like me and shareholders like you if you're a shareholder. So one of the things to think about is how much profit will a Tesla minibus generate? In the early days, the minibuses will be used in wealthy countries. There will be high demand. They will be very, very cost competitive, even if they charge significantly more than they cost. So in the early days, I think you can expect to see these minibuses making five cents per passenger per mile. That's going to add up to a dollar a mile in profit. Take that dollar a mile and you figure there's a million minibuses operating in the United States and Europe and other wealthy countries. In the short run, that's $100 billion a year in profit if Tesla can make a million vehicles a year. Each year, those million vehicles generate $100 billion in profit. Next year, they generate $200 billion in profit. The next year, they generate $300 billion in profit. Over time, as the minibus spreads to poorer countries where fares are lower, where you're not able to, once you saturate the market, you won't be able to have the same profit margins once you're competing with less expensive mass transit in places like Egypt and India, then the price comes down, the profits come down. You're still talking about $10,000 in profit a year per vehicle, $20,000 in profit a year per vehicle. You're still talking about tens of billions of dollars of profit for each year of production. So this is a huge profit mover for Tesla if they can make it work. These are the software to make sure the vehicles run full or close to full and efficiency in manufacturing, and efficiency in operation. These are all things Tesla is very good at, getting the software right, all that. Very likely that Tesla is going to be able to deliver this, make a lot of money, accelerate the transition to sustainable energy at the same time. So the Tesla minibus is coming. It's going to be a really exciting development. It's going to make the world a better place. Check out some of my other videos where I talk about this. Please subscribe to the channel. Comment below. Tell me what you think. How could Tesla minibus be better? What do you think they might do? Do you think they'll do it with a Cybertruck construction or do you think they'll use this advanced body engineering out of Berlin? 